In this video, we will demonstrate how to calibrate a metal plasticity that is elastoplasticity uh, material model for a steel. So I've already imported the test data and it's shown here as red dots. It's a 1018 steel and there are a couple of problems with the test data. Um, first of all, there's a little problem down here. Um, I'd like to maybe remove that point. And the way we can do that is we double left click on the test data set here and that brings us into the data cleanup tool. So I'm in the data cleanup tool and I get a picture of the tabular um, a, a picture of the tabular data as well as a graph of the data. So a couple of things that we we want to show you how to do here is this stuff down here is caused by slack in the test system and we it is not indicative of the actual material and so we want to remove it. We have a tool built specifically for that called the zero shift tool. I click there and as it says here, pick a set of trusted points. So the my eyeball says you know, those po four points there look pretty collinear and they're they're probably close to the true Young's modulus of the material. So having picked those points, I say evaluate. It shows me what the green curve represents the, the shifted curve that would happen, and I can choose to either discard that or to commit to that change, and I'll commit to that change. In the data cleanup tool, you can always use revert to get back to the original data. You never lose the original data. Um, we're, we're not going to show decimation in this video, and we're not going to show smoothing. But what we will do, we'll reset the zoom and we'll show you a couple more things. One, that point looks out of place and so I'll just click on it and say, and do a right click and say remove selection. And it's that easy. And in um, for metal plasticity, when you're fitting it with a set of equations, it's really not appropriate to use the data points past ultimate, that is the past the point at which necking would have occurred in the specimen. So we can come up here and simply make a box and click and say remove. And so now we're going to, um, by saying OK, we're, we're going to save those changes and now we're back into the main part of the tool. And the the tool has this idea of analytical mode shown with this icon and numerical mode shown with this icon. And when we go to choose a material model, if we're in numerical mode, we get all these choices. And I could um, use this plus button to expand everything and, and show you every last material model that, that the tool offers. So we've got by now quite a lot of uh, coverage for material models and maybe I'll just quickly show you which version of the 3D experience I'm using. I'm using R2021 and that's what's current on the public customer cloud. So I um, I want a linear elastic plastic material model and we have it here uh, elastic plastic metals. So we're going to choose that. We're going to say OK. And the, the, um, it will populate this area over here with a material model. We actually still have several choices we could make. Um, we have several elastic plastic material models to choose from. It does default to the isotropic Johnson Cook, which is an equational form. Um, and anytime you're using calibration, you're allowed to type in your own value. So in fact, here, maybe this value, uh, your uh, company decided some time back to always use 200,000 megapascals or 200 gigapascals as um, as the elastic modulus and we could turn that off as a design variable and then we could simply say calibrate and this um, this calibration uh, will go out and in any numerical mode calibration goes off and runs Abacus standard to do the stress evaluation and we're done now. We get a very nice fit. This again is an equational form called the isotropic Johnson Cook. It's an elastic plastic uh, material model um, for, for 1018 steel.